Number six. We are officially at number six in the top 15 favorite WrestleMania matches. And this one was a little bit higher up than I thought. But you know, you've talked to me, you, if you've known me for a while, you know that WrestleMania 29 that I have seen was the worst WrestleMania I've ever seen. First of all, that day was not even that great. I spent $75 on WrestleMania 29, and that was a shit show. But there was one match that made this show from a triple F minus to just an F. The one saving grace on this show, which happens to be number six here, that is The Undertaker versus CM Punk. These two had undoubtedly the greatest match of the night. They match a night, and this was by far their best match they have ever had. They had some matches in 2009, but let's be honest, those were nine minute squash fish, squash matches. They were nothing good. They sucked. This was the taker and punk match we want to see. The controversy though evolving this was the whole death, real life death of Paul Bear. And they used it for a storyline with uh, CM Punk, you know, stealing the urn, mocking Paul Bearer, which definitely caused a lot of controversy. A lot of people did not like that. They thought it was distasteful. They thought, you know, it was bad. Me, it, I understand why people would say that. Like, don't get me wrong, like, the guy just literally died, like, a week or two before the few officially started. And I can see why people found it very distasteful, but me, it didn't mind. It, didn't bother me so much. In fact, the stuff with Punk we did with the urn was hilarious. I remember when he was backstage and he was mocking Paul Bearer's behind the uh, urn and he had the lid open and he was like mouthing the words like, Ooh, Undertaker! I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Punk was just an asshole, but he was a funny asshole. But the bill for I thought was good for the certain amount of weeks they had for it. I mean, again, it's a very controversial subject with Moody and everything, but I didn't mind it. It didn't bother me as much as it bothered others. But again, that's not my opinion. Like I said, it's one of the best live performances. I've always said this. I am a sucker for live performances for wrestlers when they come out for entrances. This was by far one of their best. It was from, It's a living color with a cult of personality playing punk out. That thing... That performance was beautiful. I loved it. Sometimes I'll even listen to it from time to time. And it sounds pretty badass. And then you have, in my opinion, the greatest Undertaker entrance, not WrestleMania, but of all time. This entrance will stand out to me for years. You have the, of course, the music, the lightning and all that, and the gun. And you see smoke with this white light in the background. And you see these hands coming out, almost like silhouettes of hands coming out. And then you see basically the silhouette of the Undertaker, all covered by with these, looks like spirits or souls, coming out grabbing it. The image, you know what I'm talking about. When you see that image, that image to me screams Undertaker incarnate. That entrance was fucking badass. And Undertaker has proven time and time again why he has the best, if not one of the best, entrances in wrestling history. We got a match. The match was almost 30 minutes, and it was a great back and forth match. There weren't that many botches. You know, Taker looked great. This was back when Taker was still looking good, like before he had suffered a concussion, and his performances got really uh, weak. This was still Taker. Uh, still doing great. He was having this great match with Punk. You had Punk like doing the uh, last ride, or not the last ride, sorry, the uh, old school. Karen Year falls, you know, Paul Heyman was always great holding in the urn. You had Punk hit the uh, elbow drop on Taker on the outside, and Punk bounced off Taker, and Taker didn't go through the table. Almost got a near fall, uh, almost a uh, count out victory. One of the spots that took me a few times to watch to finally understand what understood what happened, and I do admit this was kind of dumb. Undertaker gets hit with a GTS, but when you first saw it, I thought maybe he countered it. 
I couldn't tell what happened, but he hit, got hit with the cheat test. He bounced off the ropes. He immediately got Punk at Tombstone, but thankfully Punk kicked out. I think that would piss everybody off if Punk didn't kick out of that Tombstone. At least one. If they went in there like that, that would have been stupid. But towards the end of the match, we see Taker try and go for a last ride. In a very similar way how Triple H almost beat the streak. Back at WrestleMania 17. Punk is on, you know, take your shoulders. He's about to get hit with the last ride. And Punk's like screaming for Heyman. Like, give it to me, give it to me. And Paul Heyman hands him the urn. And Punk smashes the urn on the back of Taker's head. He crosses Taker's arms. He does the ton stick out, mocking Taker. And Taker kicks out. They redid the uh, false finish with uh, Triple H. Except with a sledgehammer, it was an urn. I'm gonna, they did a nice little single so they were counting the tombstone and Taker hits the tombstone and wins. Gets his urn back and goes 21-0. Like I said, this was, in my opinion, one of the better Taker matches. A lot of people don't give this match enough credit. It was easily the match of the night, and the more I watched it, the more I liked it even more. The entrances alone are awesome. The match itself was great. The story they were telling was great. I just loved this. And I said, when I was doing this list, I was trying to think, like, where do I put this match? Do I put it a little bit lower or higher? Because I knew it wasn't going to be one or two. I knew it was not going to be one or two. Then I thought of another match. It's like, well, it can't be that match. I thought that match was better. But then I, I looked at it like, is it after Hulk Hogan, Vincent Mann? And I think it barely works. Like I said, the street fight was awesome. The Rock and Hogan match was always be more iconic. But if you want a better, like, wrestling match, if you want a better, like, streak match, and one of Punk's better matches that he's had, and one of Taker's better matches, this is the match. This is not Taker's best WrestleMania match, by far. Don't worry, that match will be coming up soon. But this is undoubtedly one of his best matches at Mania. Like I said, this was before WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 30, in my opinion, was the downfall of Taker at Mania, or at least competing. That's when you start noticing more the injuries. He was sloppy. And again, WrestleMania 30, he got injured. He got a concussion, unfortunately, so we can't help it. And then, of course, WrestleMania 31, he looked great in his match against Bray Wyatt. Then WrestleMania 32, he was a little slow. WrestleMania 33, he, it was not good for him. That was not a good night. 34, he was only in there for like 90 seconds. WrestleMania 35, he wasn't there. So, Taker was never really the same after this match. After WrestleMania 30, that's when... Once WrestleMania 30 hit, it seemed like he wasn't the same. And then, you know, like I said, he had that good match with Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 31, but then after that, it really just started showing. And half the time you get, most of the time you would get a Taker match and it would suck. Sometimes it'd be on him, but again, he's just suffered so many injuries. He's older. His legs are all broken down. But this match was one of the better Taker matches. One of the truly last great Taker matches we had. At WrestleMania. And it was with Punk. And a lot of people said that. That should have been invented. You know, on the card that we had. I agree. This match should have been the main event. Triple H and Brock Lesnar. No one cared. It was our second main, but no one cared. Rock vs. Cena too. Nobody cared. Punk and Taker was the only fresh match that we haven't seen. Of. Yes, I, like I said, I know they had not feud in 2009. But let's be honest. That feud sucked. This was... Proper CM Punk, the megastar CM Punk versus The Undertaker. And guess what? It was an awesome match. A very great match. A match I think people need to go back and kind of rewatch. Because that WrestleMania was god awful. But that one match made that show somewhat tolerable. But why am I king? That Mania sucked just. It was terrible, but if it weren't for that one match, that pay-per-view might have been the worst pay-per-view I've ever seen in my life. 